Happy holidays and welcome back to This Week in Bevy. This week we see BSN prototypes, more provenance for change tracking, and of course, more no standard progress. Times of Progress also shows off some progress. <laughs> and there are a number of fun shader demos like water and filters for the community. It's also interesting to see more and more support for not just baked lighting, but mixed, baked, and real-time lighting. And I feel like this is a really underused aspect of Bevy at the moment, so I think I'll dive into it a little bit more in the future. And with that, let's talk about what made it in the PRs this week. Following up on Bevy ECS gaining no standard support, Bevy app extends the functionality available on these targets to include the powerful app and plugin abstractions. With this, library authors now have the option of making their plugins no standard compatible or even offering plugins specifically to improve Bevy on certain embedded platforms. To start making a no standard compatible plugin, simply disable the default features when including Bevy app, which if you're a library author, you've been encouraged to do this anyway, as it can also help with compile times and binary sizes on all platforms. And last week we saw change detection being extended to events, and this week change detection was extended to spawns and despawns in 16047. This additional information was then used to enhance the current error messages, which is pretty sweet. This feature seems to have started with pure change detection and is morphing into a more general provenance-based informational framework, if you will. So it's really cool to see how you can track what's happening, where it was caused, and I'm really excited to see this merge with the Bevy Inspector prototypes that people are all building, but we'll see what happens in the future. Next up, we get into rendering with baked light maps and mixed lighting. Baked light maps can be created using software like the Bakery and the Light Mapper, while real-time lighting is what you get when you throw a light into a scene, like in the 3D scene demo. 16761 introduces various stages of mixed lighting to combine baked and real-time lighting in different variations, all the way from purely baked up to purely real-time, with the default being somewhere in the middle. This is included in a new example in the Bevy repo, as many new features are, so definitely go check it out if you're interested in baked and mixed lighting. Speaking of lighting, the march towards bindless and multi-draw continues with bindless light map support in 16653. The implementation allows binding up to 16 light maps at a time and falls back to binding them individually if bindless is not supported on the platform in use. And finally, we've got Bevy input focus, which continues to be both improved and made use of inside of Bevy, to provide first-class input focus handling. This includes replacing Bevy Allies focus with the new input focus, generalizing bubbling, and even a pluggable tab navigation framework. I'm really happy to see these going in because I feel like keyboard navigation and focus control is really important, especially in gaming where we use a whole bunch of different input devices. And with that, we're into the prototypes, or <laughs> not the prototypes, the showcases this week with a prototype. This is a BSN macro implementation meant as a learning exercise to become more informed about the future of scenes. This demo shows off a hot reload mechanism based on patches. And this demo is matrix style drones. The demo only uses Bevy ECS, not the full Bevy package, to power a sand engine and shows off matrix style drones chasing a character. And new to shaders in Bevy, this author chose to try to recreate the water described in an Acerola video. That video is how games fake water. And from shaders to UI, this is Guild Simulator. Six months of effort have gone into this management slash strategy game where you play the manager of a guild in a medieval or heroic fantasy world. It's a fully UI driven game inspired by Potion Craft Simulator and the archive of the current state of the game is available on GitHub. It does seem like future development is going to happen privately for a future release. And speaking of input devices, this is Brushstroke Tessellation, a Rust translation of Squiggy powers this brush stroke tessellation demo. You can define your own brush and use speed, pressure, and other inputs to shape the final result. The author is hoping to polish it up and get a release out in the future. And progress on the development of Times of Progress continues with a recent update to Bevy 0.15 and a new pause menu. The pause menu uses two custom UI materials for the paper texture and the animated button, plus a sliced texture for the border. It's all vanilla Bevy UI, and additionally, the pause menu uses a Kuahara filter. Times of Progress was also featured in Rock Paper Shotgun recently. Our next demo uses pseudo 3D isometric maps in the style of Final Fantasy Tactics games. Each tile has an X, a Y, and a height value, which allows you to draw and stack tiles using a custom level editor. And then we've got an image of an asteroid eclipsing a star from Cosmos. The font used in the bottom left is Pixeloid. And next up, we've got progress on a work in progress for Bevy UI macros. These include autocomplete and more, and it's always interesting to see people building out custom interfaces to different Bevy features. Varg did some work on their high-resolution UI, 
for high resolution targets. The pixel font on the left is hand drawn, so the vector font on the right isn't a perfect match, but it is pretty close. And finally, for our showcases, we've got the VS Code Bevy Inspector. This Bevy Inspector Visual Studio Code extension has its first version now available on the VS Code Marketplace. The extension displays Bevy entities and components right in your editor side view using the Bevy Remote Protocol, of course. It can refresh data when you want it to or via automatic polling with a configurable delay, and it can destroy an entity through the power of a click. The source for this is available on GitHub. And with that, we move into the crate releases, which starts off with a giant bang with Avian 0.2. Avian is a ACS-driven physics engine for Bevy, and 0.2 is another massive release with several new features, quality of life improvements, and important bug fixes. There is a comprehensive announcement post, which you're looking at on screen right now. Maybe you can see the sidebar over here. <laughs> I really enjoy seeing these announcement posts. I think Avian does potentially one of the best jobs of any Bevy crate in the ecosystem right now of doing these releases. And I would love to see this kind of thing from more crates. So with that, I'll let you check out the Avian Physics 0.2 release and we will move on to the very first version of Bevy button transitions. This is a simple crate for reproducible button transitions. So if you're looking for image swapping or color tinting, maybe this is the crate for you. And I can't believe it's not BSN 0.3 is out this week. I can't believe it's not BSN has been a testing ground for BSN-like behavior. The 0.3 version introduces the template macro, which you can see on screen here. And if you're trying to do things like spawn nested entities in a repeatable way, I can't believe it's not BSN might be a crate that you want to look into. Next up, we've got Bevy Hammer UI 0.15, which is a UI framework that lets you use Bevy UI and adds the UI builder pattern to build widgets and an optional dot style pattern to provide an alternate way of defining styles. This is a fairly small crate coming in at about 300 lines of code total. So if you're concerned about using a third party UI library for any reason, this one should be one that you could upgrade to the next version yourself. And then we've got a really interesting crate for our last one called Gigs. Gigs provides a simple abstraction for graphics jobs, as it's called. A graphics job, as the crate calls it, is a unit of rendering work that only needs to be done sporadically on demand. For example, terrain generation in a compute shader would only need to run once for each chunk of terrain. This crate helps avoid most of the manual extraction and resource prep boilerplate that comes along with this and lets you focus on writing shaders. In the basic example, you can see it spawning in a basic job and using observers to figure out when that job is complete. This seems to be really ergonomic, in my opinion and then you can implement a graphics job for this struct. I'm really looking forward to playing around with this myself because one of the biggest things that prevents people from doing more graphics work is the amount of boilerplate actually needed to set up the various resources and configurations that you actually need to use. This is why the material trait in Bevy, and yes, even as Bind Group, are really great things. And that's it for this week. As always, we have the full list of pull requests that were merged this week on the website if you want to go through them, as well as opened issues and open pull requests if you want to get a little bit more involved. And happy holidays. I will see you in the next one.